The inspiration to do this video came in part from a, an experience I recently had where I was driving past a beer factory and they had this giant beer can outside with the branding and label of this particular beer. But they had substituted their name on the label with the word Earth and then underneath it a tagline that said something like, the future is in our hands. I don't know if it was just the right thing at the right time or that I had seen too many moral prescriptions coming from moral sources, but I found myself fed up with corporations trying to position themselves as moral chaperones for the rest of society, especially when the best moral advice that they seem to be able to come up with consists of bromides and platitudes. And out of that frustration, it got me wondering why is it that corporations today are so enthusiastic about punctuating the work that they do with moral instruction for the rest of us, when it has nothing to do with who they are or what the purpose of their corporate enterprise is. For example, a major telecommunications company here in Canada has assigned themselves to be the champion of mental health by encouraging conversation and destigmatization in their advertising content. But honestly, if I want to grow in my understanding of mental health and the afflictions of real people, I'm not going to turn to my cell phone carrier for advice on the topic because why would I? Coca-Cola, who needs no introduction, elaborates on the work that they do in their mission and vision by telling us that it's all about love, sustainability, and our shared future. But this from a company who has been accused of being the worst plastics polluter in the entire world by the publication Ethical Consumer. If they were being really honest about what their mission was, it would be about selling as much poisonous and nutritionally vacuous soft drinks as they can with little regard for the health implications or the environment. So given the disparity between what corporations actually do and how they describe themselves and their incessant habit of lecturing the rest of us about their moral values and the apparent insistence on their part that we should adopt those same moral values, doesn't it make you wonder why they do this? Why they spend obscene amounts of advertising money uh, to perch themselves on a high horse just for the privilege of being able to pontificate to the rest of us. Up until very recent times in the scope of human civilization, we had our best people contemplating the big moral questions for the sake of educating the rest of us on how to live well. They would study these questions, they would contemplate them, they would read what others who came before them had said, and then they would offer their own thoughts. And while they didn't always agree with each other or get everything right, at least their motives were simple. They wanted to try to understand our ethical needs and gain insights to share with the rest of us. They weren't simultaneously blending it with some objective like selling cars. And unfortunately, most philosophers today would rather spend their time deconstructing their own discipline and navel gazing rather than trying to answer the big questions that just won't go away. And we continue to be moral beings in need of moral guidance. And in the absence of serious thinkers doing serious thinking about moral and ethical questions, there are those who would gladly fill that space to tell us how it is that they think we should live our lives. But they aren't doing it out of goodwill or because their primary mission or activity is educating the public. It's selling beer or smartphones or whatever the latest fashionable thing happens to be. And values like sustainability are the last thing on their minds. If companies like Apple really cared about sustainability, and if sustainability means something like ensuring that what we do lasts for a meaningful amount of time, then they would build products that serve our needs for at least five year intervals. Instead, they build products that cost as much as something that should last five years, but we're lucky if we actually do use them for that long. And if we do happen to use them for more than a single year, they will invest a lot of effort into convincing us to upgrade on a yearly basis with the result of us discarding or throwing away the last thing that we bought from them as if it never even mattered. Their goal is to keep us consuming at an abnormal rate and they reveal that goal to us. They never tell us this, but they do reveal it to us in the manner in which they manufacture and promote their products as if we need a brand new one every single year even though it only has minor upgrades. Now, the kind of person who might be persuaded by an Aristotle or a Plato or maybe a Buddha or Confucius or an Augustine or a St. Thomas Aquinas would devote themselves to trying to find satisfaction in this life 
apart from fortune or material possessions, since those things are unreliable and unsatisfying, even if we do happen to acquire them. In other words, if you were to seek moral advice from moral creeds that have a long standing pedigree, then you likely wouldn't be the kind of person who would be easily persuaded by marketing that pacifies you with platitudes while trying to get you to consume more than is necessary or wise. So if a consumer corporation's goal is to get you to consume to that degree, then real moral and ethical philosophy is going to compete with that goal. So it's no wonder why consumer corporations stand in opposition to true traditional moral and ethical creeds that have been well thought out and well established and practiced for generations upon generations. Instead, what they do to compete against that is to fill the vacuum that now exists, exists in the ethical world with ethical sounding cliches that make, make us feel like we are satisfying our moral needs while giving them what they want, which is our consumption. And this is textbook sophistry and manipulation. Distract your audience with pleasing illusions while advancing an ulterior goal that without the distraction would be easily assessed as a moral compromise, if not a moral evil. So I think it's safe to say that free market corporate enterprises is not where we should be getting our moral instruction from, and nor should we willingly be aligning ourselves with their moral messaging since it's only being used as a form of distraction and manipulation. But there is one remarkable thing that I've noticed that seems to defy a lot of what I'm saying here, which is that if their moral sanctimony was so meaningless and arbitrary, you'd expect it to be more randomly conceived and, and inconsistent. But in truth, the moral creed that is perpetuated in a lot of the consumer advertising that is out there is remarkably consistent. They all seem to take the same moral positions and insist that we do likewise. So how is that possible? Because again, these corporations aren't investing time or money in hiring moral philosophers with the hopes of educating the public for their own good about true morality. Instead, they are adopting crude moral cliches for the sake of a public relations charade. Um, so where does this consistently composed creed actually come from then? It seems to me that it comes from activists, especially political activists. It comes from that, that unhinged and extreme portion of society that is so convinced of their moral superiority that they will scream at you if you don't adopt the same, the exact same political and moral positions that they do. And one of the ways that they advance their moral agenda is by lobbying corporations to think and do as they do. And because these corporations don't actually espouse or act out of a true moral creed, they don't have any of the necessary moral integrity to resist that kind of activism or outside pressure. For example, I have a moral creed that I've devoted myself to studying and applying to my own life. And if someone were to put pressure on me to betray that moral creed, as often happens, I would likely say no. Being truly moral means being intolerant of the things that you believe to be wrong. But because these corporations don't actually have any true moral beliefs, they don't say no, they genuflect to whatever pressure is put upon them. And activists take advantage of that lack of moral integrity to pressure corporations through threats of moral condemnation and denunciation if they don't comply, as in come and sponsor or march in our parade and if you don't, we will denounce you as bigots. Of course, you get the idea. So what we're left with are large, powerful, rich corporations who use our need for moral fulfillment for manipulation rather than education based on a creed that is determined through the imposition of fear and the threat of denunciation, which is a really bad way to arrive at any moral conclusions. So what are the big takeaways from all of this? I think it should be fairly obvious and self-explanatory, but if it's not, let me be the first to say that corporate America is not where we should be getting our moral direction from. And that's easier to say than it is to do. While it might be obvious to say that Coca-Cola doesn't have my moral interest as their first priority, they do have extremely powerful resources to manipulate me, whether I consent to it or not. We all think that advertising doesn't affect us, but the billions of dollars that corporations and politicians spend on advertising says otherwise. So the best thing that we can do to protect ourselves against that kind of manipulation isn't to try to withstand it, but to avoid it altogether. Log off, 
tune out and read a book instead. The last thing I'd want to leave you with is the encouragement to try to recognize what that moral creed is. If we can recognize how reprehensible the process of arriving at that moral creed is, we can be fairly confident that the creed itself shares in that moral corruption. If the vine is corrupt and bad, then it's likely that the fruit is going to be corrupt as well. We need to take notice of the kinds of moral values that corporations easily adopt because they don't have the fortitude to reject them. And then ask yourself, do you have the fortitude to recognize and reject those same morals that are being pushed by uh, corporate sophistry and fanatical activists. And if you are feeling morally unsure and in need of direction, a good place to start might be by looking at the kinds of values that these corporations consistently espouse and then head in the other direction. Hey, thanks for watching. The reason I can continue making content like this is because of the generous support of my viewers. If you are able to support the work I'm doing, there are a couple of ways you can do that by donating through my website or by joining my online community, The Reinforcements. Both can be done by visiting brianholdsworth.ca, the .ca because that's how we internet in Canada. Members will have the opportunity to personally interact with myself and other community members, and certain levels will receive a free gift basket from Glory and Shine, who is a family-owned Catholic bath and body products company whose beard bomb I'm wearing right now. Members also get free access to Christ-Centered Capital, which offers ethical investing tips that are in accord with Catholic beliefs. Even if you aren't able to support my work, consider checking both of them out at glorianshine.com and christcenteredcapital.com. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, thanks for watching.